Hi, everybody. I agree with the senator that whatever cost it may uh, look like to the um, oil and coal uh, corporations, the cost is really too great to keep doing what we're doing, and that's why I'm here today. It's a great honor to be in the Capitol uh, talking about an issue I think is really urgent. My father was a Navy man, and the one requirement he had as I was growing up uh, in terms of where we lived was we had to be in sight of a body of salt water. Mm -hmm. So I grew up listening to foghorns at night and being chased by horseshoe crabs by day, and I've always loved the ocean, and I think like a lot of us felt that it was infinite, vast, and certainly infinitely forgiving in terms of what we were doing to it, and we now know that that is not the case. Um, what I love about our oceans is their, their sea life and their mystery. Uh, the oceans contain so much life and variety, and most of it is hidden from our sight. A lot of it is, if you'll pardon the pun, alien to us. <laughs> and um, this makes the process of learning about the oceans and what is in them what lives in them, an unending series of surprises, a constant discovery of treasures. As Stanford biologist Steve Palumbi says in our film Acid Test, which you're about to see, the ocean is full of organisms that are so unlike anything we know on land that their very existence seems impossible. For instance, they're life forms that don't need light or food to survive. They simply consume chemicals such as hydrogen sulfide that bubble up from deep sea vents. So to quote Dr. Palumbi, this is ridiculous. Um, these same features that make the ocean so wonderful, its, it's otherworldliness, um, they've actually worked to the ocean's disadvantage because for many of us, the oceans are either out of sight and out of mind, or their inaccessibility has limited our scientific uh, exploration, and their vastness and power have made them seem indestructible with endlessly renewing resources. So we tend to forget a very important fact, which is that we all depend on the ocean for our survival, regardless of where we <coughs> live or what we eat. Uh, the oceans generate most of our oxygen, uh, they regulate our climate, they directly provide most of our population with sustenance. And so we cannot prosper unless the ocean prospers too. And the ocean is not prospering. One secret our oceans have kept very well is a sensitivity to carbon dioxide pollution. Now scientists have known for decades that when CO2 mixes with ocean water, it creates an acid. But only recently did they begin to realize what this growing quantity of acid would mean for ocean life. And as you'll see in the film, this new understanding has a lot of the world's leading ocean scientists really freaked out. And what they can say with assurance is this, that if we continue burning fossil fuels as we are now, we will double the ocean's acidity by the end of the century. I think what freaked me out recently was learning that plankton now weighs 30 percent less than before. Plankton, which is a source of food for so many of the sea's creatures, um, that's already such an alarming statistic, and it will only get worse if we don't do something now. Um, how damaging will this acidity be for ocean life? Um, many scientists believe that organisms may, may not be able to survive such a radical shift in chemistry. and some of these organisms, like plankton and corals, for instance, are actually at the foundation of all of our ocean food webs. And if those perish, what then happens to the hundreds of thousands of species further up the chain? We just don't know. But what portends to be on the horizon is best summed up in the film by Dr. Ken Caldera of the Carnegie Institution. We are moving from a world of rich biological diversity essentially into a world of weeds. <coughs> so the scientists are rightfully alarmed, and, and so should we be. But there is hope. There is a solution. In fact, the scientists have a very specific hope, which is that 
all of you here in Congress, our policymakers, will listen to what the scientists are saying and take it to heart and that you will all put aside your differences and begin America's transition to a clean energy economy, an economy based on efficiency and renewable power that will build a workable future for all living things. Thank you. I don't know if any of you have had a chance, I'm sure you're too busy thinking about health care, uh, to watch Ken Burns' series on the <coughs> national parks. And the series makes it very clear that it is sort of part of our human instinct to look at these beautiful tracts of wilderness and want to make money off them and make a profit. And it shows that really it was the legislators who had the vision to keep us from ruining our world because really the American people could not see what they were doing even as they were trying to build businesses in the Grand Canyon, Teddy Roosevelt signed a law that protected it. And we would not have the Sequoias and we would not have the Grand Canyon if the legislators hadn't had the vision to protect us from ourselves. And I think the American people will not forgive uh, their leadership if we don't get the message out to them so they can write their congressmen and say, and, and women, and just say, we can't allow this to happen. We only have one planet. You know, our oceans are finite and they're only, uh, they can only forgive so much. So I hope we can, I'm delighted at the turnout today and I'm delighted to be a part of this film, which I agree with the senators, so articulate and well done in RDC. Thank you, Sigourney.